Hi everyone, welcome back to Half Big Takes. My name is Tito Lola. Today is going to be such an interesting video. Do you know why? Because we're going to be talking about Mallory Towers by Enid Blyton. But before we start, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be going through childhood bangers that we all read when we were kids. So this is going to be, I believe I've done like the Rainbow series, Rainbow Fairy series. So now we're going to be talking about Mallory Towers book, at least the first one. So make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. So Mallory Towers is written by Enid Blyton. If you don't know Enid Blyton, I don't know for you. I don't know what rock you were living under when you were a kid. I don't know what was going on. But Enid Blyton is like the creme de la creme of British children's publishing. Like, I don't know. People don't really talk about her that much now, which is weird to me. Which is a bit strange. Because she brought out bangers like Famous Five, St. Clair's, and of course Mallory Towers. This is like creme de la creme. This is by and the Mallory Towers books itself. And the famous fight, that was like a tour de force. That was like a mastery. Okay, so we're going to talk about this book. I've actually filmed this video already, which is insane, but I filmed it a couple of days ago. Tell me why it's like 80 minutes. What am I talking about for 80, 80 minutes? This book? What are, what are we doing? So I said, no, this, this video needs to be under 30 minutes. Like even 30 minutes is a stretch. I would love it to be 20 minutes. I would love it to be 20 minutes because like it's it's a it's a children's book. What am I talking about for 18 minutes? What happened there? You have to try and edit it down. You see, I'm waffling. This is the problem. I talk too much. Okay, let's just start. Okay, so in the first chapter, we meet the three new girls in first year and they're all in like the north tower, they're in the same dorm room and everything. So we meet Dara Rivers, who's our protagonist. I'm pretty sure this is her. This is my girl. I'm pretty sure this is her though, just because in the book she's described as having brown hair, but that could be any white girl. Um, but we meet Dara Rivers, our protagonist. We meet Sally Hope, and then we also meet Gwendolyn Lacey, who is kind of our antagonist in the story. We also meet Alicia, who's kind of like the class clown. She has a sharp mouth, kind of blunt, doesn't suffer fools. We also meet Miss Potts, who is like their house mistress. She's also a teacher in, in the school. Beginning parts of the book, so we kind of get the personalities of the girl shining through. Darl is sensible, she's practical, she's kind, she's smart. We get Sally Hope, who's another one of the new girls. She's reserved, she's quiet, she's polite. What's important to her is that she's not like a pushover. That kind of quietness it doesn't lend itself to meekness, which I thought was interesting because we didn't get a lot of information about about her in the beginning it was only the later parts of like the books that we kind of saw her personality shine through and we have Gwendolyn Lacey who is vain she's self-involved and she's quite mean and mean-spirited and you're frequently invited to draw comparisons between the girls when school and lessons start you kind of see their personalities at play so Sally like I said we don't get much information about her in the beginning and she kind of stays in her shell Gwendolyn on the other hand we do get a bit about her she's frequently the butt of jokes and that is frequently at the hands of Alicia who I said is like the class clown kind of person we actually get Gwen's like POV during the books and it's so interesting we see like her thought process like this is someone who's she's vain like she's incredibly frivolous she thinks everyone out everyone is out to get her that kind of feeling like oh this is a great injustice done to me never takes accountability of things she's frequently in the wrong but always sees everybody else as in the wrong and one of the things that is like frivolous about her there's like an obsession that she has with her hair there was an example in which she like kept on trying to comb it out a hundred times a night and the people the, the girls in her dorm were like get to bed like lights out at a certain time and she showed up to class on her first day leaving her hair out she has really long like golden hair and her her, cl her classmates and her dorm mates had to tell her like babe you don't do that yet we don't do you have to plate it up you have to plate it up Dal in comparison is really well liked but i think what's interesting is that she's kind of struggling to find who her people are and who her close friends are in the book and that's a reoccurring like theme throughout the entire book you get her wishing that she was alicia's friend because she meets alicia on the first one day when she's like on the platform train platform being dropped off you get her wishing that she was alicia's friend she was wishing that alicia didn't already have a best friend betty and you kind of see her participate in the shenanigans that alicia does and the pranks that alicia does to kind of like glom onto her and i just found that incredibly interesting one of those pranks 
was Alicia pretending to be hard of hearing in French class. Daryl and Betty would repeat whatever Mamzelle, who was like, you know, Mamzelle, Mademoiselle, the French teacher was saying really loudly back to Alicia. Alicia would pretend not to hear again and then the entire class would then chorus on and it would be just, and it, it would be chaos. It, it would be a loud classroom. It was fun while it lasted, but eventually their house mistress, Miss Potts, who was teaching in like a next door classroom, came in and she was like, she saw what it, for, what it was for and she knew that it was a prank. She was like, yeah, Alicia, come to me. We're, we're going to fix that earring real soon. And of course, like, of course it was a prank. She saw it for what it was. She shut it down. The next important plot line involved Daryl, Gwen, and Mary Lou. So I already talked about Daryl and Gwen. But Mary, but Mary Lou is another character. She's not a new student. Uh, Alicia, not a new student. Betty, not a new student. There's a whole cast. Catherine, who's like the head girl, not a new student. So Mary Lou, she's not new. Mary Lou, she's described in the book as being like a scared mouse. Like the girl is incredibly fearful. She's scared of her own shadow. She doesn't like going into the pool. She's scared of the dark, scared of insects. Like she's just a scared mouse. That's how she... I'm pretty sure those were the exact words being described. So... In this plot line that um, contains Gwen, Daryl, and Mary Lou, Gwen is in the pool. She goes and she dunks Mary Lou into the water and it's described as her doing it for far too long and she would have continued to do it for even longer if Daryl hadn't stepped in and pushed Gwen off of Mary Lou. So Daryl pushes her off and she's livid and she's like, okay, but what if someone did that to you? What if someone did that to you? And Gwen is scared at this point because Daryl looks scary. Daryl looks scary and she starts to leave the pool. And Daryl's like, where are you going? Why are you running? Why are you running? So she follows after her outside of the pool. She grabs Gwen and she like shakes her really hard. She shakes her. And then the head girl of the form, the aforementioned Catherine, she's like, Dara Rivers, what are you doing? Let go of that girl. <laughs> Let go of her. They get into a little kind of like argument. Dara's like, did you not see what she just did? Someone needs to teach Gwen a lesson. Someone needs to teach her a lesson. And Catherine's like, yeah, sure, but it's not going to be you. It would be me, the head girl, or like a teacher, but it's for sure not going to be you. And they get into the kind of like, a, she shouts and, um, Catherine sends her out of the pool and immediately after when Daryl like goes to Daryl is like making her way back to school she's going to like the changing room she realizes it for what this is she knows she has a temper and she's already feeling immediately guilty immediately sad when she sees Gwen in the changing room she immediately apologizes to Gwen Gwen is not that receptive to the apology of course it's Gwen so Catherine calls a dorm meeting and she's like what are we going to do about what just happened and then while they're having the meeting Daryl comes in and she's like surprised like oh what's going on what's going on and she immediately goes up to Catherine and she apologizes she's like I'm so sorry I know I have a temper I inherited it from my dad I I thought that when I came here like I vowed to myself that I wouldn't release that temper but I did and I'm so sorry for all of that and everyone's immediately like they're fine everyone's fine everybody's like because how can you be continue to matter at someone who's readily apologetic and she was and the captain was like okay cool that's good but you're going to have to do something that you probably don't want to do you're going to have to apologize to gwen and she was like oh i've already done that i've already done that like i've already covered that she already apologized and i think that's like such a good character trait and they said it in the book it was like how can you be upset at someone like they didn't need to judge her this whole meeting didn't even it could have been an email it could have been email because she immediately judged herself and went about setting amends. And I think that's what makes Daryl my girl. That's what makes her my girl. Like, this is this is my girl. This is, honestly, me and her go together real bad. Like, I love her character. But from this scene, I think it's so interesting because we kind of get the worst traits of the girls on display. Daryl, Mary Lou, and Gwendolyn on display. So Daryl, we know she has a terrible temper. Mary Lou is that she's a coward. And Gwen, it's that she's incredibly spiteful. Because we know the only reason why she targeted Mary Lou is because Mary Lou is the only other girl who is weaker than her. 
she's the only other girl that she could have done that to no other girl she, she could not have gone with her whole chest to go and try that on another girl it just wouldn't work it just wouldn't work for her because like that's a death wish on her there's no way that could have worked but because mary lou is fearful because mary lou is scared because mary lou is kind of a coward that's why she could target her it's kind of being a bully you're targeting the only other person who's smaller and weaker than you so that's what gwen did i just thought it was interesting seeing like their worst traits coming out from this scene and we kind of see how the girls go on from this point it's interesting because Daryl already knew that she had a temper and she's kind of vowing to keep it in check from this point on. And then Mary Lou is incredibly grateful to Daryl for standing up for her. And then she starts really like glomming onto Daryl. She's doting after her she's constantly cleaning up her stuff much to the frustration of daryl and she's still being described as a coward she's still being described as someone who can't stand up for herself and it's interesting because gwen's takeaway from this entire thing is to become an even bigger menace so gwen wants to get back at daryl for like because daryl like told her off and she did shake her okay put my hands up she did she did do that so she wants to get back at Gwen for doing that she also wants to get back at Alicia because Alicia has been a thorn in Gwen's side like Alicia whenever she sees Gwen it's on site whenever she sees her, she just has the a lot of mouth for Gwen she just has a lot of insults ready for Gwen so what she does to try and get back at Daryl and at Alicia she does this by pretending to be friend Mary Lou and then playing tricks on Mary Lou so she does things by like stealing her pants she's throwing her clothes in puddles of water she's snapping the buttons of a dress I know that she like cuts the strings of a racket that she had does this whole chapter of her hiding this huge spider by the way in mary lou's like writing desk all of this it's in hope of getting back at daryl and alicia by framing them for doing all of this and it's all under the guise of being mary lou's friend so that no suspicion kind of cast on her like there's one scene in which she's sewing up the buttons of a dress that she is the one who put <laughs> she mary lou i mean gwen Gwen is a menace. She she literally she ripped off the buttons so that people can be like, oh my gosh, what happened, Mary Lou? Like who's playing tricks on you? And she was like, oh my gosh, I'll sew these buttons back on. Like, wow, this is so crazy. At one point she actually tried to like after that whole spider incident, she tried to like throw a line to Miss Potts, like, hmm, I think it was probably like Daryl, but Miss Potts wasn't hearing it. Miss Potts was like, I hope you're not trying to snitch. She was like, I hope. You're not trying to snitch because snitches get stitches. <laughs> they didn't use the word snitch, they used the word sneak. And she was like, I wonder what the punishment is for girls who sneak. So she wasn't trying to hear on that. So I thought that was really, really funny. But again, it's important to know that she's only able to do this in the book because Mary Lou still does not stick up for herself. She's able to be friends with Mary Lou or be able to like tolerate Mary Lou because we kind of get her POV and she's like, I don't really like Mary Lou. Like this girl's a liar. Like I don't really like hanging out with her, but like, hey, you know, she's being pleasant that kind of thing gwen is literally only able to do that to mary lou because she literally couldn't do that to any other girl it's not like gwen pretended to change her ways entirely you know what i'm saying like she still talks shit she is still mean she is still a liar she's still mean-spirited in front of mary lou any other girl would see that for what it was and be like i'm not hanging out with you i just don't want to if she had pretended to be nice all around then i would be able to be like okay yeah mary lou is just giving her a chance because hey she seems like she has changed seems like she has grown but she's still a mean-spirited person in the book and Mary Lou is only hanging out with her because like she can't stand up for herself anyway around this time Daryl gets a letter from her mother who says like oh I met Sally Hope's mom and I actually met Sally Hope's little sister she has a baby sister who's like three months old and Daryl goes to go and tell Sally and Sally's like I don't know what you're talking about I don't have a baby sister you must be mistaken stay out of my life stay out of my business you're wrong i don't have a baby system so then the grades come out and i was like damn is this me like <laughs> she's like damn is it the consequences of my own actions well, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions so she's 10th from the bottom and to put this in context it's like a classroom of like 
30 plus girls. So she is 10th from the bottom. And to put it in further context, Gwendolyn is at the bottom. She's dead bottom. She's only nine spots ahead of Gwen. And she's only four spots ahead of like, um, Mary Lou. Cause Gwen, uh, Mary Lou's like sixth from the bottom. So it's bad. So she goes to her teacher, Miss Potts, and she's like, I know I'm not dumb. What's going on? Why am I here? And Spots was like, yeah, babe. You didn't know when you were out here playing tricks. You were, you were doing prank. You were doing pranks with Alicia. You don't know that Alicia, she's one of those people who can, she'll waste your time. She'll waste her own time. She'll waste teacher's time. She'll waste everybody in the class's time. And she'll still get good marks. Because guess where Alicia plays? Fifth place. Fifth place. By the way, I hate class counts like that. Because how are you wasting everyone's time but you're still going home to study? Don't piss me. <laughs> Don't piss me off. Anyway, she kind of resolved to do better in academics after that and to kind of, you know, face her work. So then parents weekend rolls around and Dal asks Mary Lou to hang out with her and her parents. Mary Lou would love that because if you remember, she's still sucking up to Dal, still doting after her. She would love to do that, but she already said yes to Gwen who had asked her to hang out with her and her mother and she's still too scared she can't stand up for herself it'll be an easy thing to say hey Gwen I'd actually like to hang out with someone else it'd be so easy but she's still like no I'm, I'm too scared to do so so she hangs she ends up hanging out with Gwen and Daryl asks another girl emily who's in their dorm as well she's described as someone who really likes to sew to hang out with her parents and it's a fun time it's a fun time but obviously emily is not like her person still and we got this interesting again that friendship theme we got this interesting thing about her mom being like oh like okay if this is her special person because she wanted to meet daryl's friends like okay if this is a special person like okay interesting mary lou is hanging out with gwen and gwen's mother and gwen's governess and gwen is just she's just talking shit she's a bold-faced liar she's saying oh she's good at sport she's best on the team on tennis oh she's best at swimming her grades are up there and mary we get mary lou's pov and she's like this girl is a liar She's like, this baby is a full-blown liar. Daryl's mom tells Daryl that she actually has a message from Sally Hope's mom to give to Sally. The parents go, she goes to find Sally and Sally's not trying to hear anything. Sally is not trying to hear anything. She's playing the piano really loudly because, I, yeah, I think they're in the instru instrument room. She's playing the piano really loudly and we've established that Daryl has a temper. So Sally is like, leave me alone. I don't want to hear about any of that. I don't want to hear, um, oh, by the way, so flash, flashback. So she had asked Mary Lou and then she had also Mary Lou to hang out with her parents weekend. She had also asked Sally Hope and Sally Hope was like, no, no, because Sally Hope's parents were incoming. So she had asked Sally Hope to hang out with her and her parents and she was like, no. No, thanks because remember she had been like stay out of my business i don't have a sister earlier on so now when they're in the music room sally hopes like bro leave me alone i don't hear what you have to say you keep rubbing your perfect mother perfect parents in front of me i don't hear none of that remember again i don't have a baby sister leave me alone because Daryl had gone to her mom and said i think you're mistaken sally said she doesn't have a sister and Daryl's mom was like no i saw that baby with my own eyes <laughs> she's like no no so anyway it then culminates in like sally pushing daryl and then daryl again she's like at a 10 she's everywhere's red she's seeing red she now pushes sally really hard by the way like a chair and she's clutching her stomach and she's in pain um and then she and then she leaves the room and daryl like immediately tries to find her but she's already like she can't find her. By the end of the day, Sally's like in the school nurse. She's at the school of infirmary. I think that's the word I was looking for. She's at the school infirmary. And I think like a day or two passes by and she's still at the school infirmary. And there's a rumor going about that they had to like bring in a specialist for her and that Sally's people have been called. And in her heart, Dow is just feeling extremely guilty because she's feeling like she caused this. Like she's the one who caused whatever's going on with Sally right now. 
and she can't bring herself to tell like a teacher or anything she's feeling incredibly scared because she's like oh my gosh what if they sent me out i'm the one who brought this illness or whatever's going on sally on to her what if they send me out of school what if they expel me blah blah and we get this really interesting like part of the book where she's like i get how mary lou feels i get about having this kind of crippling fear this kind of crippling like being anxiety fearfulness everything because it really stays on top of you and i thought that was so interesting because we get to see her kind of empathize with mary lou because she's feeling incredibly scared i will have to say that in the book until this point she had kind of sneered at mary lou for being fearful she was always like shaming her for her being like a scaredy cat but i think that line and that when we get to this point was so interesting because it's like yeah the fearfulness can really grip you when it grips you it grips you one night daryl kind of like she can't sleep she's feeling guilty she's feeling afraid she leaves her dorm then she's somewhere on the ground and she sees a car pulling in and she's curious and she's like hmm, maybe i can get some answers she follows the car which is very flimsy logic by the way but <laughs> but okay it turns out it's her dad who was called in her dad's a surgeon it's daryl's dad daryl's dad's a surgeon he was called in to take out sally's appendix because sally has appendicitis when she saw her dad when she heard her dad's voice she like burst out crying her dad was with miss grayling who's like the headmistress she burst out crying she explains to her dad and the headmistress like how we got to this point her temper sally saying she didn't have a baby how she pushed sally blah 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 they tell her look it's not your fault she has appendicitis next morning um and she sally, sally's mom and sally's dad sally's parents meet the headmistress and they kind of tell her about the change sally has undergone since her baby sister was born they were like my they're like oh my gosh my friendly child is now so much more reserved and she we've kind of caught her being like cool to her baby sister like she pinched her baby sister really really hard one time that we saw headmistress deduces like yeah she's probably jealous which i thought was so obvious because there's like a couple of instances there's like three instances when we're greeted with them being like oh sally says she doesn't have a baby sister well, I wonder why she would say that because someone else said that she has a baby sister. I'm like, y'all, she's jealous. Like, I don't <laughs> upon reread, I was like, yeah, she's obviously jealous. So they ask Daryl to go in and to see Sally, um, and to make sure that she mentions that Sally's parents, particularly Sally's mom, dropped everything, including the baby. Like the baby's being taken care of by someone else right now. They left the baby at home to come and see sally and when sally hears that from Dow, it's like night and day she's she's opened up she's so kind so sweet she's like oh my gosh i can't believe they left baby at home when sally's mom eventually comes to see sally she's like do you want me to stay a bit longer i can stay a day longer for you she's like no no no, no let's not leave baby daphne at, at home with a stranger baby daphne needs you blah blah like she's being so sweet benevolent kind genuine like it's it's like night and day and i really loved seeing sally's character develop Anyway, so her and Daryl apologize to each other and the friendship blossoms. And again, it's just so sweet. I really like seeing that. Anyway, so Sally and Daryl, when they're hanging out with each other, still at the infirmary because Sally was infirm for like three weeks. Like she was, she was out of it anyway. Sally and Daryl devise a plan to kind of buck up Mary Lou's confidence. And the plan is for Daryl to, to, pretend as if she's drowning so you have to go and tell alicia the plan so that alicia can get all the girls on the other side of the pool so that the mary lou can be the one to save her now alicia was like that plan is not going to work that plan is not going to work because mary lou is a scared cat she's a coward and in fact this plan can backfire because if mary lou doesn't do it everyone's going to laugh at her so after that daryl now goes back to sally and sally's like and daryl's like babe it's not going to work because of alicia listed a b and c x y and z as to why this isn't going to work and she's like ah isn't alicia so smart like she thinks of everything and then sally's like yeah she's smart but she's almost too smart she's almost too smart and she's like this plan is going to work sally made up the plan by the way she said this plan is going to work why because it's for you because you're the one who's going to be the one who's like calling mary lou for help babe like it's your and mary lou has been itching for the chance to help you she has literally been trying to help you this entire time she's going to help you because she wants to help you and because she likes you so she goes back to alicia daryl goes back to alicia she tells her the plan and alicia's like 
okay okay oh if you guys want to do what you want to do but me i've already said that this baby is going to do it the day comes the day comes and y'all guess what she gets in the pool she calls um mary lou for up and mind you the plan has always been for mary lou to like send in to like throw in the water life rot thing that circle thing even while she was in the pool and pretending to struggle, she was like, Mary Lou, can you send that life raft and send it to me? Blah, blah, can you throw it in? Guess what Mary Lou does? Yes, she stands scared for a second. And Alicia is not just betting until you like, see, I knew she wasn't going to be able to do it. But guess what Mary Lou does? And this is why every single tongue that rises against Mary Lou shall fall. Guess what Mary Lou does? The baby's in her school uniform, by the way, because she's been feeling a little bit ill. She has a cold. She's in her school, school uniform and anything. She jumps inside the pool. She goes to go and swim to to to. to she, <laughs> she goes to swim to Dow. She gets a hold of Dow. She tries to hold her on, and of course she does. Um, some other people have to come and help because, like, at the end of the day, Mary was kind of weak and she was in her school uniform and she has a cold, so she couldn't really do it. But the fact that she was willing to do it was enough. Everyone was congratulating her. Everyone was patting her, like, "Girl, you did that." And like I said every tongue that rises against my 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 girl mary lou shall fall shall fall she did that gwen gets jealous of mary lou getting attention and then she smashes her pen and again she means to frame it on anyone else but her gwen is waiting outside because she plans to come in and also be like whoa what happened but then she overhears like the girls talking and like you know what we can easily catch whoever did this because they'll have ink underneath their shoe gwen hears this and she runs she goes to like another cupboard she gets a bottle of ink she goes and smears it underneath daryl's shoe and then she takes off her shoes puts the bottle of ink in the cupboard along with her shoes and then she changes into slippers and then she comes into the room all like whoa what happened and people think it's going to be Gwen who did it but Gwen's being also like confident and she's like yeah let's check everyone's shoes let's go and check everyone's shoes so obviously they check her shoes she's wearing slippers there's nothing on there they go and check to, to check um Daryl's shoes and guess what it has ink on it everyone turns on Daryl um and everyone's like including alicia which was kind of heartbreaking for daryl because she was like how can you truly believe i did this we've been hanging out i've been hanging out with you and betty thought we were friends how can you believe that i'm the one who did this to mary lou so everyone believes it except for mary lou mary lou believes that daryl didn't do it and sally who's out of the infirmary at this point doesn't believe that daryl did this and kind of shuns daryl and then mary lou is like being kept up at night she's like i know my girl daryl didn't do this like i know she didn't do this so guess what mary lou does my mvp guess what she does she wakes up in the middle of the night she goes to like a cupboard she was like she deduces, she's like, hmm, the person who would do this is the person who would want to spite both me, Mary Lou, because it was my pen, and to spite Daryl because she puts the ink on Daryl's shoes. So who has the most to spite both me and her? Gwendolyn. So she goes, she's looking, she's looking, she's looking, she's like, Gwen would have had to have put this stuff near the scene of the crime. Guess what? She finds the cupboard, she finds the ink pot, she finds the shoes. And that's why M is not only for Mary Lou, M is for MVP. Mary Lou, the MVP, she goes back, she waits until morning, and she was like, everyone wait the fuck um uh, everyone i have something to say i'm sitting on a bad boy piece of information i'm sitting on a bad boy piece of information do you understand a bad boy piece of information she shows the shoes and obviously she saw the shoes say gwen because i don't know if you guys have ever well even if you haven't you probably know like boarding school when you go to boarding school and you're living with lots of different people, you have to like stitch in your name on every single piece of item so that you can be able to be like, yeah, this is mine. So it obviously shows Gwendolyn's name on it. So that's how she knew it was Gwen. That's how she knew that, okay, she would have spread ink from that ink bottle, which she also found underneath the shoe. She goes to the dorm and she's like, I went in the middle of the night and I found all of these pieces, y'all and everybody is already like shook and shocked by the theater of this like oh there's a new suspect in the mix but again they're not shook and shocked because guess what mary lou went in the middle of the night mary lou was scared of the dark that's why i say my she's my girl she's my girl. they're already like ah, mary lou 
the same way Lou. anyway so she does all of that and she's like okay i don't even have to say the person's name look around you you see it written on the person's face and of course gwen is looking red-faced angry frustrated shameful all of the emotions and everybody's like ah, it's gwen it's gwen it's gwen everybody's immediately apologetic to Daryl. she's like yo we're sorry we're sorry Catherine included who's the head girl babe i'm sorry like i didn't really think it was you but like there was no other proof so we had to blah blah she was like it's fine and then we get alicia who like looking really ashamed of the fact that she was like she really did blame daryl and she was quite cool about it too and she was like um i'm sorry her apology was quite stiff she was like i'm sorry you can still come and hang out with me and betty but daryl who has found who her, her true friends are who the friends who stop with her they are Mary Lou and they are Sally Hope. And she was like, yeah, it's cool, I forgive you, but I, you know, I have my really good friends right now, you know. Anyway, it's the end of the term. Daryl has got um, Sally Hope and Mary Lou as friends. And she isn't really hung up on being friends with Alicia. Daryl did really well this term academically. Um, Sally, not so much, just because she was sick for quite a long time. Gwen actually did better than anyone thought she would. Not that not that high oh but she did better than being dead last and it's because earlier in the book daryl had been like what are you going to do you that you're lying to your parents what are you going to do when reports get sent back home and she's like mm -hmm. reports pardon pardon because you know gwen had a governess this is her first time being like a proper proper school like she was she had like a governess she was homeschooled she had a governess governess was useless so when she heard that like oh reports have been sent home she started doing better it ended really well. Daryl and Sally, they're going to hang out over the summer. Mary Lou's going to send letters to each of them. She lives a little bit farther than Daryl and Sally. They ended with them saying their goodbyes to each other and to Mallory Towers. We got this really cute line from Daryl, which was like, goodbye, goodbye, potty, she yelled. Goodbye and goodbye, Mallory Towers. She said almost under her breath, I'll be glad to see you again. And then the last sentence of last sentences in the entire book where goodbye goodbye till next time goodbye Daryl and sally and the rest we'll meet you again soon good luck till then anyway it was great i there are a couple of things i really liked um i like the inverse of like mary lou saving daryl in the pool that seemed to be the central saving um location how Daryl had saved Mary Lou in the pool from Gwen and then the inverse of Mary Lou saving Daryl in the pool. Because I think, again, another thing that I forgot to mention was the fact that, like, the plan was for her to just send the life raft in. But Mary Lou had known that, like, oh, the life raft had gone on to be mended because someone asked, like, ah, why did she just send the life raft in? And Mary Lou was like, the life raft's not there. Like, they've gone, it's gone off to be mended. Like, she knew this while everybody else didn't know this. So she, purposefully flung herself in the pool and i really like that and i like the idea of like how they explored like fear and being scared and how you can't really there were some interesting nights about sally when she was devising the plan she was like you can't shame someone like you've we've already tried to shame her out of her scaredness it doesn't work you have to let her kind of develop it by herself and i thought that was really interesting and i like the other theme of like friendship friendship was a really big theme it was you know we got daryl and alicia daryl really trying to be really good friends with alicia trying to go on to her and then realizing that she had friends in sally and in mary lou i mean sally and mary lou were the ones who stood with her at the end you know when everybody else thought that she was the one who did the thing it was just a fun time it's like girlhood friendship coming of age it's going to be really important because again this is just the first book this is first term we have like five or six books in this series spanning daryl's form and specifically daryl i'm pretty sure they're like 12 here and then we go up to them being like age 16 or 17 or 18 i can't remember i don't say 16 17 so yeah i don't know it's just a fun time it's a fun time it's a fun read i enjoyed it so that's basically it for this video i really want because i think it's it's so much fun to like go back and to reread all these books i've been checking all like my old books i used to have a, a bookshelf here but then my parents decided to box up all my books so all my books are in are in boxes right now but yeah i think it's really fun i would love to go through and i would love to do reviews for them but yeah tell me what you think tell me if you ever read Mallory towers 
tell me if it was a fun time for you tell me if you still have the book tell me if you enjoyed the book tell me yeah just let me know let me know and let me know what else, other childhood books that you read when you're a kid and maybe i have them too and we'll see i'll probably do a review on them sometime soon but yeah make sure to like make sure to subscribe let me know if you want me to do the next book second term at smiley flowers let me know if you want me to do that um but yeah anyway yeah so that's been it bye and happy new year